Hello everyone! In case you don't know, I'm a pet portrait artist and today I'm going to take you through Marley's commission, who is very much a beach dog by the way. I was given a ton of photos proving that too, but those few are the ones I'm going to focus on for his portrait. So hope you're ready for a really awesome one today because this beach doggo deserves a proper sunset beach background, right? Uh, yes, um, I usually stick to a solid colored background, but this was a special request from the client Diane and we gotta listen to Diane, so I'm excited. Let's get started. Okay, to create a stunning sunset with acrylic paint, you'll need to put down that first layer of color, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like really, it will just help the next layer become more opaque. Um, I'm going to base the sunset and ocean off of that reference I'm showing you. Uh, I think it's important to bring in as much of the references you can back into the painting so that it makes the portrait as personal and special as possible. Okay, so now that the paint back oh background <laughs> is painted in, um, I'm going to move back into describing Marley. I feel like it's more motivating keeping up with the entirety of the painting in a systematic way that works for you. Uh, I work in the same way every time so I know what I have to do to get to that next step of the piece. Uh, for example, what I have to do now to keep moving along is outline and perfect all the major shapes like the eyes, nose, and ears, and that's what you're going to see me do for the next uh, couple seconds. Alright, everything is drawn in better now, and I know I won't be adjusting the outline of Marley drastically at this point, so I want to get the background painted in with maximum effort. And that's because when I go to add in the finer flyaway hairs, like on his ears in the future, um, I won't have to risk painting over them to correct the background. Because acrylic paint dries quickly, I'm going to work on one section at a time, and I'll bring colors across the canvas's edges as I go. Um, I pre-mix the major colors I'll be using too so I'm more prepared, like the blues, purple, and that greenish in between blue, which is just a bit of Naples yellow and phthalo blue and white mixed together. Um, as you can see, I'll just I'll put down a color, then I'll wash my brush quickly and grab the next color, put that down, and drag it down into the previous color until it all blends. <laughs> Hopefully you can see it better than I can explain it right now. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to continue with that until it's done. Alright, it's all looking nice and opaque now, and I will go back in to add a bit more color and seagulls. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot to tell you that Marley is obsessed with seagulls, so it's decided that they should be added into the background, uh, which I'll do when the paint dries. So now it is time for rendering. I always start at the eye if I don't know what to attack first. I'm going in with Naples Yellow, and I'm just going to see where that takes me. I do want to add some sunset colors into his fur, so um, I'm going to add maybe some burnt umber to that Naples Yellow, and I'll sketch in his outline again. And that brought me to detailing his ear. Um, I put down some purple mixed with burnt umber and black, then painted in the squiggly lines I saw to get that texture going. Uh, the lines will fit in more realistically as I'm painting it into that dark paint. The color on the highlights is looking a tad chalky now because I switched to a tint of just burnt umber, but I can fix that later when it dries. Okay, here's my tip with teeth. Even if they aren't actually white, paint them white. I also use a fine light gray to outline the shapes too so that they look more defined. And uh, yeah, since white is on my brush now, I'm going to work on all the white fur areas. Thank you. 
I chose this reference photo because he looks so happy and I kind of have to make the painted pose up as a seated pose is best for his portrait, not standing like he is in the photo. I'll look at other photos I have to see how his markings and chest look like to make an educated guess to see how I should create the chest like you're seeing. Like I mentioned before, some areas of the background need a bit more detailing. Uh, the water needed some texture and there are some clouds that are just lines of color. Uh, I still want this all to be pretty vague as it is just a background to Marley. That being said, seagulls seem pretty important part of what Marley loves, so I didn't want to make them vague and blended in. Otherwise, I would have painted the seagulls in when I was blending all the background colors together earlier. Uh, I just chose a color a tad darker than the top of the sky so that they fit in but also don't compete with Marley's spotlight. This photo is what Diane, the client, sent to me, so I'm going to base my abstract seagull lines on them. So you're going to see me try to replicate that one seagull on the far left of the photo, but yeah, it definitely comes out very scruffy and I think it just made the whole section look pretty busy. So what you can do and what I did is I quickly dipped my rag in water and just wiped it right off. And you can only do this if the paint underneath is dry. Okay, now the background is looking awesome, so I'm on to the final details of Marley. I made the cheek too small, so I'm gonna adjust that here. So Marley is so happy in this main reference photo because he's looking at his favorite toy, this pink ball. So Diane requested that that be painted on the edges as well as his two other favorite toys, a stuffed bunny and rabbit. Uh, this is a portrait that is going to be given as a gift so she didn't have photos of the exact stuffed toys. Uh, the beauty of Google is that there are a plethora of images for those kind of dog toys. So I just used some of those images to help me figure out what a stuffed squirrel and bunny would look like and kind of like penciled them in. I basically just eyeball the spacing, like so, using very accurate finger spacing, not about using rulers. This is as specific as I need it to be before I feel confident enough to paint, and fast forward a bit here is the finished product. I also went ahead and finished Marley off of camera. Basically, I just use a watered down burnt umber to glaze over the ears, bring back that warmth and his coloring, and added in some whiskers. 
This is such a fun one of a kind piece for Marley here and I really hope Diane's friend enjoys it. Uh, thanks for watching and always feel free to ask questions below.